Hi there everyone, it's Mr Petrie here and I'm pleased to be able to join you this week for our assembly. I wonder, do you recognise this? I'm sure you do. What is it? It's the Scottish flag. Sometimes it's known as the Saltire and sometimes it's known as the St Andrew's flag. But who was St Andrew? And as next Monday is the 30th of November and that's St Andrew's Day, I thought that today I would tell you a little bit about who Andrew was. We read about Andrew in the Bible, in the Gospels, the part of the Bible that tells us about the life of Jesus. We know that he was born in Bethsaida, a town on the Sea of Galilee, and that he worked as a fisherman along with his brother Simon Peter. In fact, it was Andrew who introduced Simon Peter to Jesus. Andrew was a follower of a man called John the Baptist, who told him that Jesus was the Messiah. When Andrew heard this, he wanted to go and tell his brother the good news that the Messiah, the special person the Jews had been waiting for, had come, and that this man Jesus, that he was the Messiah. And when we hear the stories about Andrew, he's always bringing other people to Jesus, just as he brought Simon Peter to Jesus. It was Andrew who told Jesus about the boy who had the five loaves and the two fishes when they were looking for food to feed a huge crowd of people. And Jesus took the little boy's picnic and used it to feed that huge crowd beside the sea. And then when another of the disciples, called Philip, wanted to tell Jesus about some Greeks who were looking to speak to him, he went first of all to Andrew. And it was Andrew who took Philip and these Greek visitors to meet Jesus. And that was the first time that people from outside the Jewish faith met Jesus. People who were foreigners, letting us know that Jesus came for everyone. But what happened to Andrew after Jesus died? Well, after the death and resurrection of Jesus, it's said that Andrew went and preached in the area of the Black Sea, that he travelled up the river Dnieper as far as Kiev, which is the capital of Ukraine, and that from there he went further north to a city in Russia called Novgorod. That's why he became the patron saint of the Ukraine, Romania and Russia as well as of Greece and Scotland. According to tradition, he founded the church in Byzantium, what we now know as Istanbul in Turkey. Andrew, it said, was crucified at the city of Patras in Greece in 60 AD. The tradition is that he has to be crucified on an X-shaped cross because he thought he was unworthy to be crucified on the same type of cross as Jesus was. This type of cross is now often known as a St Andrew's cross, and it's it which appears on the national flag of Scotland. But how did Andrew come to be associated with Scotland? Well, the legend is that a Greek monk known as St Rule had a vision in which he was told to take a few relics of St Andrew from Patras to the ends of the earth for safekeeping. A relic is something that's associated with a saint, usually a part of a saint's body. And in this case, Rule was told to take the saint's arm, kneecap, three fingers and a tooth to the ends of the earth. So he set off on a great 
sea journey that took him to the furthest reaches of Europe, as far as anybody could travel at that time. And he came ashore in Fife, at a little tiny settlement that was then known as Kilraymond, which is now the modern town of St Andrews that bears the saint's name, a town that's famous nowadays as being the home of golf. But do you know that St Andrew's Cathedral, which is now a ruin, was for hundreds of years the largest building in Scotland? It was a magnificent building and people travelled from all over Europe on pilgrimages to St Andrew's to the place where the relics of the saint who had been a disciple of Jesus were kept. In 832 AD, St Andrew is said to have appeared in a vision to the Pictish king Angus the night before a battle against the Northumbrians in what's now known as the village of Athelstainsford in East Lothian. The king of the Northumbrians was King Athelstane. Now it's said that on the eve of the battle, St Andrew came to King Angus in a vision and promised him victory. The next morning, the Picts and Scots saw a white cross formed by clouds in the sky. They won the battle and they said that their victory was due to the blessing of St Andrew and they adopted his form of the cross as their flag and they named him as their patron saint. But it really wasn't until much later that St Andrew was first recognised as the official patron saint of Scotland. That wasn't until 800 years ago in 1320 and that was part of a very famous event in Arbroath, the signing of the Declaration of Arbroath, which was an appeal to the Pope by Scottish noblemen in which they were asserting Scotland's independence from England. And in that document, Andrew is mentioned as the patron saint of Scotland. So that's the story of Andrew, the disciple of Jesus whose relics came to Scotland, to the town we now know as St Andrew, and who became our country's patron saint. And now we'll have a short prayer. God, our loving Father, we thank you for the story of Andrew, Jesus' disciple, who introduced Peter, the Greek visitors, and the little boy with the loaves and fishes to Jesus. May we be like Andrew in sharing friendship and hospitality. May our school and our country be places in which everyone matters, everyone has an honoured place, and the dignity of everyone is assured by our faith in you as the creator of us all. Amen. And we'll finish our assembly today with the song One More Step Along the World I Go. I hope you enjoyed the story of Andrew. Take care everyone and I'll be back to speak to you again soon.